My name is Greg Pauly and I started here at the museum about three and a half months ago as the new curator of herpetology. Uh, and that means that I'm taking care of the collection here. Um, we have a very large collection of reptiles and amphibians, about 183,000 specimens. Um, but I also do a lot of research and one of the reasons that I was hired was to continue my research, uh, part of which is on uh, amphibians here in California. I've been interested in amphibians and reptiles since, since I was pretty young. Um, and as I started to pursue my PhD work, uh, I thought it'd be really, really sort of fun to work on a species that occurs here in California, or a group of species that's here in California. It's called the Western Toad Species Complex, or species group. And there's four species in that group, and they're all declining across their range, some worse than others. So my first interest was, to, was in a field called conservation genetics, which is using DNA sequencing tools uh, to try to address questions that then managers, uh, wildlife managers and conservationists can use as they develop management plans for some of these declining taxa. So this here is a, is a young male western toad. This is a, the most common toad that's here in California. It occurs, occurs all throughout the state. And what's interesting about these toads is that they don't produce an advertisement call. So what is an advertisement call is the first question. So we're used to thinking about the calls that birds make, that songbirds make. And the calls that songbirds make are basically calls in which a male announces presence or territory ownership, as well as he's trying to advertise to a female. Well, almost all species of frogs, and, and toads are, are one group of frogs, but almost all species of frogs also have, as their major mating signal, an advertisement call. So they're producing a call, they're broadcasting it out into the environment, they're telling things that are out there listening, hey, this is where I am, and they're hoping that a female hears them. And as I said, almost all frogs produce an advertisement call. But one of the things that's interesting about western toads is that they don't. They only produce a single call type, and it's called a release call. And we'll see if this guy will give the release call. So those quiet little calls, hopefully we got some of those recorded, those quiet little calls are actually a release call. And what that is, is that's this male, if he gets grabbed by another male, that's his way of saying, hey, I'm a male, let go of me. So since these guys don't produce advertisement calls, what they do is they congregate at breeding sites at ponds, and when they congregate at those sites, the males actively search around those ponds in hopes of finding a female, so in hopes of finding a potential mate. But they jump on absolutely everything they come across. They jump on another toad, they might jump on a tennis ball, a golf ball, a discarded beer can, my hands if I'm out there doing field work on them, my feet, a glob of mud. They're fairly indiscriminate. And so what they do is if they get grabbed by another male is they give that, that release call. As I said, these western toads give, only give this release call. They don't produce this advertisement call. And if you look in field guides and you read up on western toads, that's what it'll usually say. And not only do they not produce an advertisement call, but they lack an important morphological structure for producing the call. And that's a structure called the vocal sac. And whenever you see a picture of a frog calling, you'll see this big sac extending out from its throat, and that's the vocal sac. These guys don't have it. But if you go up to the northeastern corner of the range of these toads, what you find is that what, you go out in the field and you find what looks like a western toad, but instead of being a toad that only produces a release call, suddenly these toads are also producing an advertisement call. And when they're producing this call, you'll even see that they have a little vocal sac that's inflating over the course of the call. And when they're producing that advertisement call, it sounds a little bit different than this release call. It's a much longer call, it's a much louder call, um, and you can hear it over a pretty broad distance if you're, if you're out working on these toads. You can hear it several hundred meters away from the pond. And that, and that call sounds something like this. So it's much longer, and there's a whole bunch of pulses there. Whereas that release call was very quiet. You know, the release call was only a few pulses. So that would be sort of a series of three little release calls. It's always much quieter. And so what I wanted to understand in my research is how is it that within one species, we have males in some populations that lack the major mating signal, and males in other populations that have the major mating signal. 
And so that was a large part of my dissertation research, and it's a it's a portion or it's an area of, in, of interest that I'm that I'm actually still pursuing now that I'm here at the museum.